My name is Lindsay and welcome to the art making part of the Everhart Museum's workshop. Today we're going to talk about nature journaling. Nature journaling is a great way to get outside and connect with nature in a fun and new way. You are going to need a journal so you can either use something like this, it's kind of a small um, blank book that's great to, to carry and, and record things that you see in the woods or outside your house. This is another way to go. It's a notebook with lined paper. You can also use a notebook like this. Who doesn't love glitter? This would work as well, lined paper. And if you have a binder at home, you could um, always use this to, to create a nature journal. And if you, do, if you do go this way, you'd want to use heavy paper, like a construction paper or a cardstock paper to, on which to mount your specimens. You can go with white, you can go with color. Color is always nice. And if you do go this route, if you happen to have something at home called a sheet protector, you can put your mounted specimens on heavy paper and the heavy paper can go inside the sheet protector and it'll keep your specimens you know, clean and relatively uh, safe for quite a while. And it's a great way to preserve and to present the things you've collected and the things you've written about and the things you've you've documented outside in the in the woods you will definitely need to have some labels to identify what you've collected so either you can print them out from the website or you can make your own labels with you know with a marker or crayons or colored pencils you will definitely have to have little bags to collect specimens i love using the bags that you would use for food storage these big bags are great for, you know, big leaves and long, you know, long stems and flowers. This, this sandwich bag is great for medium-sized leaves and flowers. And this little bag is great for little things. So you will need uh, collection bags. You'll need a pencil and a pen or a pen. Whichever one you want to use is fine. When I go out in the woods and I want to document stuff and I want to, you know, observe things directly, I love using tracing paper. You can either bring tracing paper or little squares of, you know, thin printer paper. You put the tracing paper against, let's say, a tree bark or a rock, and you take a crayon, take the wrapping off the crayon, put the crayon against that tracing paper on top of what you want to rub. And as you rub the, the crayon against that, that object, you're going to get some amazing patterns textures of the thing that you're taking a rubbing of. This is a rubbing of the bark of a mountain laurel a tree, which is kind of cool, a mountain laurel bush. And this is a rubbing of a tree that is about a quarter of a mile down from my house. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but I love the pattern it makes. So this is a great way to document the natural world outside your house or in a park or in the woods. And this will look great in your journal. You will, so you'll need crayons for that. You also, you'll need some drawing materials for your journal, so uh, magic markers, colored pencils are great. Crayons are great. Anything you have at home would work for nature journaling. You'll need some glue to adhere your, your specimens to your paper, so I use glue. I love using glue sticks, and you know I love using tape. All these strings would work. All these three things would work. You will need a ruler just to measure some of the stuff that you're collecting. This is a magnifying glass. I love these because it makes things, you know, really look close up. You can see very clearly what you're looking at. And you'll always obviously need scissors. Scissors are a basic, um, a basic tool to have. When you come inside with all the things you've collected, you're going to want to put the leaves and flowers and whatever you, you found outside in a large, thick, heavy book. I put this leaf in here about four days ago and the leaf is now dry and flat and it'll be an easy way, and it'll be an easy mount inside my journal. So a nice, big, heavy book is a great thing to have around besides reading. And you're gonna put all of this stuff in a bag or a backpack. So make sure you have something at home that you can put all the stuff in and before you go outside. So, a real quick quick step by step. You're gonna gather all your stuff in your bag. You're gonna go outside, you're gonna collect leaves and flowers and take rubbings of rocks and bark. You're going to observe things that you see. 
You're going to write down your thoughts about being in that space. You're going to write down things you heard. You're going to write down things you smelled. You're going to write down what it's like to be outside and what it feels like. And then you're going to come inside. You're going to take the things you collected, put them in a thick book to dry them out and flatten them. And then you are going to look up the things that you didn't know. Research is fun. This is the best part. When you reach the last page in your journal, you're going to have an amazing first person record of not just what you witnessed, but also what you learned along the way. Your journal, besides being really cool to look at and cool to, to read and, and cool to hold, this journal will show you how much you learn in the process of making the journal. How cool is that? It would be awesome if you guys could take pictures of your journals, the cover of your journals, and maybe some of the pages inside the journal showing us you know, what things you collected, what grows around your, your area, what grows outside your house, what did you see, uh, what did you hear. All this stuff is a great way to connect with nature on a meaningful and personal way. So it's a, it's a really good thing to do. And as we approach Earth Day, it's more important than ever to know with whom we share planet Earth. So thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for sharing time with me in my studio, and we will see you next time. Bye.